So this video came out last week. Um, and I haven't seen it yet. I didn't realize there was a video coming out. So I was in live game dev. So it's not, you know, the, the content uh, that we're watching, but it's about the development. And honestly, I... I mean, let's just go into it. We can say a lot about game dev and Star Citizen and how they're approaching game dev, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> and we have to deal with it. So. Hi, everybody. Let's see what it is. Welcome Hello. Star Citizen Live. My Star Citizen Jared Live. Huckabee, and uh, we're going to spend the next hour trying to hide the fact that I'm missing a tooth in my mouth. Must go well. <laughs> Yesterday I was just talking to somebody, and a tooth right in the front of my mouth just fell out. So I said oh, I wasn't going to draw attention to it. <laughs> oh Obviously man, show, he's in pain. Our game dev specials <laughs> where we like make something for for an hour. It's really, I really like these shows. Uh, we've got props artist three, three, senior, senior props artist yeah. one. Senior props artist one better than props artist three? Yeah. I'm not sure how the farm system works in the props league. <laughs> but Neat for a week. <laughs> senior props artist. So just as a reminder, I'm not going to watch the whole thing. Uh, they will do be doing a lot of uh, development stuff. And of course, they, they'll have the, the chat interacting with them, giving them suggestions and everything. I just want to like get to kind of know these guys. Um, and see what, like, if we can peek a little bit behind the curtain <laughs> in that sense. I mean, they're kind of trying to reveal the, like, pull the curtain away and reveal everything, but I know that everything that is revealed is, is like already like another curtain behind it, which is the curtain that we're really interested in and trying to peel, like, peek behind. So, yeah. Uh, uh, what's your name? Lewis. Lewis, uh, who's going to be making something for us for the next hour? Uh, go to this camera and say hi, Lewis. Hello, everyone. Welcome to I, the stream. I'm, I'm still uh, not sure if he's just nervous I can't or. Do this. this is your job. I can't. Give me some tips. Uh, just tell everybody who you are and what you do for Star Citizen. So I'm Lewis. Um, I'm a senior props artist, and yeah, I make props. So you might have seen Alberto last last week doing concept. Um, I do production props, so it's where we production do concepts props. or we just make stuff up uh, and we make the actual props that go into the game, so that's what I do. What other I props know. are there? <laughs> so yeah, so if you've never seen one of these shows before, we're just going to I don't know what, what kind of other stuff. props there are. Uh, he's going to do most of the talking <laughs> and I'm going to read your comments and make some little peanut gallery remarks uh, for the next hour. So yeah, so let's jump into it since we've done like four versions of the same intro already. Uh, Lewis, uh, when we had Alberto on two weeks ago, he worked primarily in Blender. Uh, what is your 3D modeling program of choice? So um, I'm actually learning Blender at the moment, but my main software is 3ds Max. So yeah, just mainly 3ds Max. Okay. Um, mainly 3ds Max. And you have, this is the editor, this isn't 3D Max. So this is the editor, okay. this is 3ds Max. So what are we making today? So today, um, I've picked a concept that I found deep in the, the research. Oh, well, nice. Um, a little bit of a medical box. I'm going to be building this case here. So um, as part of the Interactables team, what I do is um, I also get to prototype cool new entities and stuff for the game um, using technology that's already kind of been made. Um, and yeah, basically, I think that's I've underutilized. some prototype tech for this um, kind of carry case. And I'm basically going to be doing the visuals for it today. So I'm going to like, I'm going to get started now because I'm worried about <laughs> how far I'll get. But um, yeah, essentially, um, that's what I'm going to be making. And yeah, I'm going to get started now. So, so yeah, I'll let you keep going. What's so you, this is not just going to be a box that sits stationary. You're, as a member of the Interactables team, this will be a box that... It's kind of crazy. He is talking about how he's a little bit worried about if he's able to make this. Like, if you think about it, 
I don't know what he earns per hour or something, but he's worried that he, he's not going to make it within one hour. I like, again, I don't want to like put an estimate on how much he's making, but essentially it's like an hourly wage. The, the cost of like having this product in game is just like his hourly wage <laughs> kind of. Which I don't know. It, it, some sometimes it's just weird to put things in perspective like that, but it's it's like uh, is meant to be interacted with by players to presumably to put things into it to pull things out of it. Exactly. Yeah. So um, part of what interactables is really is kind of like a, um, an enhanced prop team, really. So what enhanced we, what prop we do team is. We basically, like I said, look at the technology that we've we've already got, and we're kind of seeing how far we can push our props in terms of interactability. So, whereas like a standard crate in our game would just be a static object, um, okay. what we're trying to do is look at how we can make it more interesting. So, for example, this one. Um, so I'm going to do a, like a first aid kit. So it's going to have like a med gun, some refills for the med gun, and some syringes in it. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll make it so that you can pick it up, um, you can open and close it like a briefcase um, and carry it about. So yeah. This will be the kind of thing that you could uh, be retrieving as part of a mission, or you could uh, stock a couple in, in your ship's cargo bay to, you know, to use later. Uh, there's a couple different uses that you, you know, for a case of this, si of this kind. Whoa. Exactly. Um, one of the reasons I kind of came up with the idea originally was because Whenever I do a play test and I go and buy like weapons, I always get annoyed that I have to buy like a weapon and I have to scroll down and like find the exact mag for the gun that I want and stuff. And um, one of the, the kind of versions we want to do is uh, like a weapons case that comes with some attachments in it, some some magazines and stuff. Um, like a full service kit. Exactly. Just, exactly. just give me, you know, we call that a, a, a first aid kit. That's legitimately what we're looking at. Like a, like a whole kit, you just <laughs> yeah. get this item and you would have everything that you need to go out for. Yeah, because in, in real life, if you wanted, like, you know, you wouldn't go and buy each bandage individually from the shop and go to the counter and uh, buy one bandage at a time. You'd buy, like, a full kit with everything you needed to get started. So that's kind of the idea that kind of started this stuff. Um, but its applications are, there's a lot. So this one in particular will be a medical one, but, yeah, there's lo loads of He's, like, clicking a lot of useful. different areas like and I don't really see him collection. changing them a whole like lot because you, you probably just want to go to like eBay or Etsy and purchase individual band-aids at that point because you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to have to buy a box of 20 just for the one particular you know Flintstones band-aid you were looking for to add to your collection that just, just blew your mind didn't it? It, it <laughs> I don't know who you well, um, <laughs> yeah, you did. the problem like, is uh I'm a very, I find it very hard to focus on two things at once. So when it when it comes to like modeling and talking at the same time, my brain kind of just like shuts down, which is why I'm so. Like if there's something, if I need like, uh, not too long ago, there was like uh, my girlfriend, a little, a little bit of a, uh, she cut herself uh, while cooking. So we need a little bit of a, uh, how do you call it in English? Plaster? Like to, to, to put on the wounds so it kind of can heal. Um, or maybe it's already like a band aid. Uh, but we went to the store and we bought like a pack just in case, you know, it, it happens again. Or so, so with a lot of these things, I feel like it, it's just better to have like unless you know you already have a case and you don't need all of those then of course you can refill them individually but if you're starting out with nothing then it's a lot nicer to have like a box so it's yeah we've been planning what happens when you're doing 3d if someone's at like um giving you feedback over teams or something like that you end up doing this you just pan around the model for for an hour <laughs> and then nothing <laughs> but yeah um uh, Swedish fish tank uh, from the chat says, aren't most of these programs interchangeable? Yeah, for sure. Um, like 
I know Bro. the core fundamentals of like 3D. So learning Blender isn't as hard as it would have been if I, it was like the first program I ever learned, but the kind of the operations you do in them. Uh, For me personally, so this is quite interesting because we have this in I at some Max point just want to get stack. Blender um, and mess around with it. It lets us put different modifiers on. Blender has like a, a stack as well, but um, it's not, I don't think it's quite as versatile. The other cool thing about Blender as well is that it's it's free. So yeah, that's why I want to have Blender. For example, I wanted to make Holy crap. Um, that I wanted to sell like online or something. I, I could do it. Um, so same thing about Blender as well is that it's it's free. So okay. I don't, he, I mean he uses hotkeys and everything. For example, I wanted to make something. Um, that I wanted to sell like online or something, I, I could do it in Blender and you wouldn't have to pay like the prices that you have to pay for 3ds Max. That being said, like there's a lot of functionality that we use that comes with 3ds Max for production, which is why, you know, concept artists will work in Blender to create things. Um, because they're not going directly into the game, they're kind of just being um, used to kind of show it's us so what, weird. To, what we can do. I'm just undoing because like, I've realized I've done the bevel <laughs> the wrong the wrong size. Uh, He's completely reversing it. Like, where you, where you but I like to... the bevel. I thought you were doing something very like avant-garde. I was like... Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm pressing the finish it now button, which automatically completes any model on your screen. Working here at Cloud Imperium? Yeah. Uh, uh, on and he worked he spent the entire hour working in a blender um generally we have a magnificent the that part they suite of tools star engine saw the brick who young hey, position like he's talking like about that. like it's all of so this this is uh, it's like this but uh uh we do try where we can 3ds max um blender i'm still i still have the training wheels on i'm still googling every time i do an operation to work out where everything lives because obviously when once you've learned it in Max, you know where it lives in Max. But so yeah, what I'm doing now, basically, I'm just trying to get the kind of main shape. So there's like a shell that sits around it. There is a main All right. body, and oh. then I need to separate it off so that there's like a. Can't wait to see this in game. <laughs> in. And all these little crosses you see are. Basically, I've set up the like everything I need to have it functioning. Um, I did like some basic animations as well, um, and basically, I'm just going to model the geometry and plug it in as as we go along. And if I've That's... planned it okay, it should work. But uh, okay, A Robs says, any tips for people applying to work on Star Citizen? Uh, believe it or not, A Robs. Um, one of the big jokes that, uh, that I have internally is that you know, I'm going to do I'm going to do every single department before, before my time here is done. Uh, whether right. that's on the planet or in this let me hear or it. Whatever, uh, I'm going to do every single department that ever contributes to the making of a video game, uh, and one of the last ones probably being HR. But we actually recently did a one of these shows uh, just a few weeks ago, maybe seven eight weeks ago. Maybe I was 10, just going to refer us to another uh, video. With, uh, one of the members of our talent acquisition team. And we talked about uh, what they look for in in hiring applicants and, and all the kind of prerequisites and stuff. So we actually did do a version of that show. Uh, and I don't remember. Like I said, Blender's a really good place to start completely free. You don't need to go and you know, pay for any of it. Um, I don't know what's happening all the here. the skills that we use every day at work. Um, as long as you've got, you know, good foundation in that and and some good work to display, then yeah, you're in. I don't even think you need a uni course or anything anymore. Obviously, it helps to have that time to learn, but yeah, it's not it's, really. I would say it's not one of those things where. I, mean, I, I guess one of those things where the portfolio is, is like is just a lot more important. If you learn, if you learn and you grow <laughs> from the experience. But there are there are plenty of people I've known in my life. You know, I'm almost 50 years old at this point. I've met plenty of people who have a degree, and it was very clear degree and stuff like that. But it doesn't. It's not a 
things where you can tell me a version of this and you know show me your process and let's stuff. So we, we can see if we can those things so a degree is less useful the paper that's a lot of uh, Jared the, the talking. knowledge you can get from very wise words so what are we doing now so now of course just, let me know if you I'm you're interested kind of, in watching so this video shapes. i'll put the I'm link in the description trying to detail it now so i'm looking at the moment at its front bit where it kind of juts out um this is going to be very more much, by the way so this is obviously by all means <sighs> by all means uh not going to be perfect but you know something like this can take you know days even weeks um depending on weeks functionality and if uh if data forge is behaving but uh, Okay, this kind of brings me back to the first point. Like, um, if it takes weeks for a box like this, uh, we're not even talking about the hourly wage anymore. But now it's suddenly a weekly wage, which... Like, I, again, I don't want to like put an estimate on their um, salary, but it can scale up where from a couple hundreds to thousands of dollars <laughs> for a box. I understand that some things need to be modeled a little bit more in detail, but I'm also trying not to trying to criticize because of course it's necessary. Like maybe I, I shouldn't say it in such a critical way. But it it's it I don't know it's it's a, I I find it a very fun perspective. Uh, again, it's not a criticism uh, towards the, the progress of the game currently, uh, because it's a little bit in a sensitive time that when this video releases, like the uh, three nineteen patch has been for most people. Um, Kind of mediocre, like decent at best. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> so yeah, I, I just to get that out there. Um, this is like clearly not a criticism towards the work. Like I would love to have the skills that he has, uh, and if it takes him weeks to do like uh, a. a I mean, I, I keep saying a simple box like this, but it has like all, like the functionality should be simple. And that's where designing stuff like this, where it's, you take a lot of time to make something that effectively works quite simple. Yeah, no. Data Forge, another one of those terrific tools made by. So sometimes it goes like, a, you know, a little bit underappreciated as well. Like you can put, can put very little time in something and make things quite complex, but usually that, that makes it, you know, yeah, I, I'm struggling here to, to explain what, what I'm thinking right now. Like. Sometimes putting in the extra effort to make things a little bit more uh, streamlined, maybe that's the better word. Uh, it, it just, you know, pays off in the end because that makes the whole experience a, a lot better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I joke a lot, but um, it's it's really really cool. Um, usually at a studio. Um, like a props artist would just be responsible for doing static assets. Whereas here, I, I really get the opportunity to make some like awesome stuff. So um, I think I think in some of the uh, previous uh, ISCs, we've seen stuff like the the coffee machines, the posters. Um, if you yeah, yeah, got yeah. the new Alien Week gift, that's also something I got to work on and an experiment with, which was my first kind of. At the fidget spinner thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we did call it the fidget spinner internally, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was like a super awesome opportunity that like you wouldn't get anywhere else. Um, 
And yeah, it's awesome. Like so many cool Ooh, systems that it I get to use. Pulls up by learn. segments. And that's where stuff like this comes from. And towards the end, I'll show you more examples of like kind of finished versions of why what this this kind of stuff can be used for. Um, but yeah, the the future is bright. The future is uh, right. Lauman 68 asks a specific question, but I'm going to answer it because it applies to just about everything. How long does it take to create a plant or a tree? Um, uh, how That's long fair, yeah. anything takes in video games is incredibly subjective. Um, we're not telling any tales out of school there. Uh, He's going to go on a rent there. No, I'd have to think about it a bit more. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> sorry, Jared. I understand is, where you come really from. Nice. It was more about, a little bit of a weird question, in my opinion. Solving to create forms, as opposed to problem solving to create, you know, functionality and and uh, you know, the entire object. You know, you've got a starting point, which is really really cool. You know, you can see these are like latches. There's a handle that you can carry it with. Um, you know, it's got branding on it. You can tell it's a medical crate from the branding. You know, maybe the colours. Um, you know, obviously the text. Whereas, you know, if I came on this live stream and I didn't have a concept, I probably would spend oh, most gosh. of the hour just spin, spin, spin. No, concepts great for a lot of reasons, but I think chief amongst them all is somebody else goes through a certain amount of hell instead of you. I don't know. They make <laughs> it look easy. <laughs> It depends. Uh, it depends. Like, like. Well, I mean, even when Alberto was doing his, uh, I'm gonna uh, faster it a little bit more. Uh, two of them were 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 striking. Had had, had very striking silhouettes. And you're like, okay. Uh, one of them was like, all right, it was pretty much kind of what you expected. And one of them was uh, a disgusting homunculus. Uh, oh. What's here? We have a. Cool, let's see what's happening. Oh. oh. Okay. Cool. So we've got something resembling a box. There's some missing faces, but that's fine. It's not as chaotic as I thought it was going to be. Okay. It's so a lot more simple of a box than I initially expected. Free max, you're able to just, with a couple button clicks get a, a version that opens up in the editor. Yes, yeah, so you imagine, um, well, imagine you just open the program, right? You'd have to go file, export, uh, you'd have to configure all your settings and, all right. and make sure it's the right format, make sure that it includes animations, it includes geometry, it resets like the, we have a, a thing called XForms, which is basically how it's scaled. Like when, when I look down here, it says 100, 100, 100. Um, uh -huh. Say I did that, it's 208 times, uh, it's at 208 scale. So you'd have to basically select another option for that, and it's a nightmare. I've got it bound to this Control Shift E. Control Shift E. It does some stuff, and here it is. Um, so, say for example, I wanted to do a stretch limo lid. <coughs> he has become the long boy. There we go. <laughs> We've got a toolbox now. <laughs> toolbox, toolbox. Anyway. Box for tools. Yep. It's very, very fast. Um, uh, Adam at one says, is the idea for these to be carryable and stackable? Absolutely. Um, the idea for these is that, yes, they can, they can be everything from uh, mission rewards or, or mission goals. Like you, you, need, you need to deliver Stackable as well. If you stack these on top of each other, can you open the bottom one? Like, and how do you prevent that? Is it... Maybe just my <laughs> more technical brain at work right now. Like, how do you detect if some if it's in a stack or if it's openable, especially with things like you know, if you if put like your, your medical gun or something on top of it. Hmm. Or maybe a soda can or, or something like that. Can you open it and it will fall off or 
can you just not open it because there's a soda can on top? X number of, of medical supplies to you know this outpost on such and such. Uh, mm -hmm. It would be pretty silly to be carrying you know individual med guns. You're just dropping off a pile of med guns and dropping off a pile of a, a pile of the the, uh, the goo vials and stuff. So yeah. So Chris also um, towards his point, I feel like there's a weird like uh, a little bit of a not weird, uh, let's say inefficient design uh, for carrying contents, if that makes sense. Like, it's a box, there's a platform, like halfway, so the, the bottom half of the box, you know, isn't really used for anything, and there's only like one layer, while for example, the goo vials are something I can imagine that you know, stack them like uh, vertically uh, and in like this hex hat diagonal pattern or maybe even like a straight grid and you can carry so much more. You can even fit like an, another layer uh, below whatever is happening in here. So is it the case that we can only carry these boxes and they kind of fit quite little? <laughs> Or can we, you know, and the same goes for the, the, the med pens, right? They can be stacked in the same fashion, a similar fashion. Would also be cool is that um, the box would have like a different compartment for the med gun or maybe two med guns, you know, like, uh, like these can be the objects of like, for example, right here, uh, if you like make the, the lid a little bit uh, smaller and then this compartment this side can open up for a med gun or maybe two med I don't know how big the med guns are compared to this but I, I like these fit in the med gun and that's pretty much the whole length so I think there's like two med guns that fit in here so if you have like vertically these two vertically stacked all over the place like one layer after another, so you know maybe you need for for the, the the med pens you need to reach uh, reach down for another layer or something, uh, or maybe it's like fifty fifty, right? It's like you know this side is uh, med pens and this side is uh, goo vials, <laughs> to put it bluntly. That would just be a lot more useful if you ask me again. Toolbox, toolbox. I'm not designing it. But anyway, box for tools. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I can like. Oh, here we have a, a med gun. Yeah. So it definitely fits on the side, but I'm like maybe you have to like rotate it to fit another one. But it could work. Also, you can put it like maybe one on each side. I can show you now, like. It's not just a mesh. This one is something I've been developing for a little while. Um, so the animation is obviously super, super basic right now um, because it is just like, you know, me bashing it out in one hour on a stream. But this is, you know, it's most basic form, right? You've got a box, you can pick it up, you can carry it. It's actually quite big. <laughs> so um, yeah, the, the metric obviously <laughs> hasn't been decided on for these yet it, we're still kind of testing it and stuff um but yeah we'd, we'd adjust the grips we'd probably make it a bit smaller um but then you can take it on your ship uh you can open it opens up and then you've got your, your stuff inside uh i can't even pick them up for some reason Ooh. oh i know why and just to counteract uh on my point uh from earlier like this seems pretty flawless to make this like no other team or anything needed except for like the concept team that that gives you the concept and says you know can you guys make this uh, in the game and uh, this, there's no real other team that's kind of restricting his work uh, so if he wants to like have a day uh, to, to make a couple of toolboxes uh, similar to this then you can just copy it you know mix up some some uh so some geometry maybe or like just uh, change the paints and the, the branding on the outside and he can make one for multi-tools you know having 
your multi-tool and a couple of these um what's it called the 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 the, the things the attachments uh that they come with it that that define the, its behavior uh, and and of course some charges because right now we don't have a multi-tool charge but like in the end we will have a multi-tool charge so yeah Problem. yeah so basically um we have like physics proxies on these and basically this uh the collision for this box at the moment is currently blocking my ability to i see what you mean yeah, yeah an accurate hit onto the item so it's so gonna fix that to gonna test it out just take the top of this and let's see temporarily uh i don't know the big stuff but the big it, stuff it more often often than not is the smaller the smaller bits and pieces um so yeah i'm gonna try and start putting decals on this now I see, I see. It's right now. For me personally, this is the, the less interesting part. Um, I mean, it, uh, it's so good. A symmetry mod here that could be used, so we can probably make the whole thing a bit smaller. Um, but yeah, lots to change on it. I can actually still pick this up with it open, so. Oh, okay. That's uh, that's also like nice. Items. You could be walking through your. You ready to go on the ship and be giving out weapons to everyone. Well, now it's a personal Yeah, that, that. Like, yes, <laughs> Yep, exactly. There's another another thing to worry about. <laughs> so bring your Kevlar med box. That's another okay. thing I want to do. Deployable cover. That would be cool. Yeah, we, gotta get, we gotta get back. That's, never mind. <laughs> That's the brand of the medpens. And yeah. Oh, what? Patches and stuff. Um, we can even oh, like a lot more wait, attention. Wait, 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 what? Uh, the game didn't like it. So I had to go and reduce them quite a bit. So now it should be able to close and open normally. Now, how does it go from what we see, <laughs> see a little bit later? <laughs> This is another one of those things. Doing good, sweetie. But yeah, um, this is kind of like, you know, a very short look at how we'd start approaching an asset. Um, and we'd obviously pay a lot more attention to like the form. So it would probably be, we'd make it like this and then we'd look at adjusting metrics and stuff like that to make sure that it was correct. Um, and yeah, so I'd, I've done like a few different the right, keyboard so is, is, is loud. I, I started this morning. So same as oh. before, I kind of started from scratch, um, just like I did on the stream, except this one I started at nine when I got in this morning. Um, so you can see it's it's a lot more kind of accurate. I've got some POM details that aren't correctly positioned, which disappear, which is annoying. But, but you can start seeing how we develop the shapes and stuff and get some cool details in you know we get these branding decals and stuff in which are really important as well so we've got like the brentworth medical center stuff um we've actually got a really oh, cool was system, brentworth again which we set up with a lot of the props now um is it orison can basically pick specific brands in the game that have had um a branding path so i'm going to do Kovalex, for example if i apply this we have certain logos and stuff on boxes that can change oh. depending on the company so for example the, the logo changes to a Kovalex that's logo, really cool same as with the labels and as the well color scheme ever changed too. and the color scheme yeah exactly um and yeah there's a lot of them show me another one Brentworth. let's have, <laughs> make it a cure life one ah, that's, that's kind of similar benefits. okay and this one opens this so one does got, open. So it's got the latches. So this one I developed a bit more. Oh, oh yeah. okay, okay. So with the way the animations are set up, um, obviously I did some very, very simple latches, but you know, starting today, you're not gonna get very something very complicated. I'd like to spend like, you know, at least a day or two making some really cool animations, but 
just in a short time you can see like we can make shelves that move up we can position them in different ways um, you know we can have more complex latches and stuff um, we can even like import in keypads and stuff so you can have like a lockbox type thing that you can carry around with you um, well, that'd be cool yeah yeah and yeah this one's a bit better where the box is is, is, is kind of one. locked so you can like is there a third one is there... there is a third one you can open it in your hands as well i don't know if that will stay and then here's an example of like a final so you might have seen this in the verse already um this is actually a socket set that we have in a few on the cargo areas. stations but i painstakingly went through and physicalized every single item in this case <laughs> so oh, that's great we've got like that's a full great. kind of engineer's socket set oh, i wish you so could you whack something with every it every single one of these and examine them <laughs> um and there's about 30 different item ports in here and yeah i just did it because i thought it'd be cool and it was a proof of concept so i don't oh, know if they started the hammer is moving about um but yeah and then you can obviously place them back in place. So this is a lot more. And then boom, I'm off. I don't know which Functional. ships in the verse use, still use like sockets and stuff to repair, but yeah. I need to talk to the mission team now to get them to make a mission where uh, you get given one of these boxes <laughs> and you have to go and explore and find all 30 pieces. Get an empty box. Oh, no. empty oh, oh that Most would be horrible. Ones. But <laughs> they left the back door but... of the cutlass black open, uh, and all these socket pieces fell out. Go go around Stanton and find them. Sorted. Go around Stanton. But yeah, these are just a couple of examples, uh, and obviously, like we'd love to do more like military ones, uh, you know, mining ones, medical ones. Um, Listen, it, I appreciate the medical one, but they're not like showcasing um, like medical one you were working on. Like the showcase is clearly not about uh, the the functionality of the medical box. Uh, the showcase is about how a, a property or a, a prop, I guess, will. Uh, be very roughly finished and put into game and i really like that it's like he says he, he worked like a day and he has a has a couple of boxes he can put in game i don't know if it's gonna break the game but it's at least cool to have a couple of these boxes these are vertically placed into the thing yes yeah i can show you that that's um oh, where is it oh maybe it's gone <gasps> Maybe they're, they're, they're talking about it. Uh, going to talk about well, it right now. Reset itself. So, there is a content browser. Oh. What did I call it? It's the for those of you who are, are like he's typing and I'm not seeing anything. We moved the content browser off to the other monitor, so that, that all the <laughs> yes. cool secret stuff <laughs> doesn't get shown on. Very smart. Let's see. It's roughly not looking for it. Because uh, it's always hard to. The, the main lesson we learned is that it's impossible to make anything for a video game in an hour. But I still like showcasing a bit of the process, a bit of the workflow, uh, some of the tools that people use. And stuff like that. So I really appreciate you taking the time on your phone. Yeah, this is great, yeah. especially if you're like. like um... uh, so yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll stop cutting them off. Um, we'll back next week with, with something. I can't think of it. I, I was on an airplane for a long time and I'm still not fully here. Part of me is still there. Uh, fine. yeah, check it out. You're also uh, missing a teeth. ISA this week was, was a look at Rastar and how it's being used to, uh, uh, uh place, uh, uh, the new underground facilities that are going to 320. Um, realizing all their potential and all the different variations and stuff that the folks developed years ago when they first uh, created those things. And then uh, next week, what's next week's show? Oh, oh. right. <laughs> next week's show is a, is, is a big look at uh, work of the VFX team and a bunch of the stuff that they're doing uh, uh, and, and, and maybe just a little <laughs> bit of an update on fire. Uh, this is 
honestly a lot more interesting to me than the VFX part. Because we're probably going to do a bigger update on fire in a couple of weeks. So, but uh, they're working on lots of cool stuff. There's lightning. So big, right? Yeah. yeah, there's lightning in that one too. It's really cool. Uh, so yeah, so that's Lewis and I'm Jared and uh, that's Dave uh, and that's Pete and this has been Star Citizen Live <laughs> and yeah, that's it. Goodbye. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was a little bit of an awkward uh, outro.